The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here on this uh, Tuesday, the 19th of September. Dow's down 145 at 34,479. Let me just go back to this. Oh, I haven't got it. Let me just put it in right now. It's just been a very busy morning. I had a Zoom meeting up until just before my show. So now I'm trying to catch up to everything. Uh, let's go to right there so you remember i made a big deal for months weeks and weeks and weeks now it's going on for months about the 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 indicator of last resort that is the 914 moving average so crossover that is so within that context what have we got Right as we are looking at the charts at this particular moment, uh, I'm looking at, oh, come on, what's going on? A little slow there, huh? A little slow there, huh? Maybe it'll hear me. There it is. So what we're looking at here is, this is the Dow. We waited and waited and waited for the, for the green to go pink, meaning negative on the 914 crossover. <clears throat> We use this peak right here on August the 1st using a different indicator in the Chapman Wave. Um, this is the conglomerate, the overall umbrella that I use as the Chapman Wave methodology. Um, we used a particular indicator to get us that exact high on August the 1st to go short the Dow. <clears throat> but we had to wait and wait and wait to confirm that there was a sell signal to a sell mode by this pink nine period moving indicator. And what happened was just for one day, there was this big pop up the other day. And I said, I think that's temporary. We stay short. And look what happened. It went pink yesterday and today it's pink again. So within, the, within that context, look what we've got for the first time. And the day is young. I mean, not even an hour into session, 37 minutes or something like that. And what have we got? We've got a pink nine period moving average in the S&P. That means that I'll switch between each one. So this is the white background. Here's the white background with the daily, week, daily weekly, monthly charts. And look at this, S&P arching over, went pink. Days young, it could change back to green again. But in the meantime, that weekly chart is so important. Look at this, the vertical line from this mid-July high at about 40, what is it, 45? Was that 46,000? Uh, I should have put that in. I was at 46,002 or something crazy like that. 46,007.07. .07. When we went to the recovery high uh, at 4507 on the 27th of July, look, here's the weekly chart. Look how weak the MACD was. Look at the stochastic. The on balance volume, even though it was positive, was way under the previous one. But the determination of this, the term. Determination. Yep, the termination of this nine period moving average in the weekly chart still hasn't got even close to being negative. So, as I've said before, it's going to be you've got your little rudder, you've got your little your little speedboat that makes the quick turns. Then you've got your uh, your uh, bay cruise ship that goes around the bay that makes turns, but not that quickly. And then you've got your super tanker. That's the monthly chart. So this just says it's taking a while for this intermediate term, the weekly chart, to cross negative, I don't even know if it will. But in the meantime, we have to use the daily. And the daily says, down 21 at 44.32, the deeper it goes down today, and the day's young, we can still have a pretty decent bounce. We're going to be watching the distance, the aperture between the 9 and the 14 period moving average and the daily chart. Look at this. Oops, I didn't want to go there. That's the intraday. That's the intraday. Look at this. Yeah. You've got the S&P just turning pink. You've got the QQQ just turning pink as we speak. Down three at 367.67. So that just says 
you've got an arch formation occurring right here in the daily chart. This is the daily chart. This is the QQQ. The gray line is the uh, intraday action of the uh, QQQs. Nine is the nine period exponential moving average, 14 period moving average. And it just crossed negative. Day is young, but so far it's rolling over. And you can see it right here in the daily. But look at the weekly. Look at this, the daily chart just making a rather large H to M pattern. And you've got a potential. I'm going to draw these in now because I like to be ahead of the game. And that just says there's a chance that you're going to get a lowercase h. But if you take too much time, you're going to hold steady here and you're going to have a successful test of the left side low. Um, in this case, that's the low of, that's not 43.35. That is the low of 43.35.31. In the QQ, in the, oh, I'm still looking at the S&P. In the, in the S&P, look at the QQQ. Same thing. The 9P moving average in the weekly chart is still great. Just turned pink in the daily chart. Look, it got repelled at whichever way inside track, repelling the zone. Look at the SMHs, which we're short. And some people, if they were lucky, um, didn't get stopped out of the new position we put on yesterday, the aggressive position, three times uh, short. Uh, we got stopped out for a very tiny loss. I should have widened the stop, but I thought it's either going to work immediately or it's not going to work. So we've had tremendous success with this, but today, not so, because uh, the stop was just a tad too tight and we got stopped out. But we're still short the semiconductors from uh, two points under the 161.17 all time high, and it's now at 145. And here you've got your arch formation. This is telling us how important this inside track uh, right there, inside track support level is. We're sitting right on it at this particular time. It tells us that for the first time, the 14 period moving average is actually moving down a little bit together with the nine, but that doesn't mean to say it's going to cross negative. But the, the low that we're looking at is 143.35, and you're 145.83 right now. Monthly chart is fantastic. 159. 42 was the high in November, and the semiconductor is making all-time high. Within two points, it goes to once and less than two points. 161.17 was the high in July. Isn't that amazing? I mean, talk about, I love this technique. Look at this, Carvana. We had one of our dinners was saying, um, CVNA, was looking at this and asked me about it, and I said, no, I think it's still going to make a leg D. Well, it did make that leg D, and now look at this. 57.19 was the high in July, and it pulls back to the 35s, and then it runs 22 points. It goes all the way to 56.80 four sessions ago. Unbelievable. Look at this beautiful cup formation with a price tie match. Makes a double top with uh, no new high, and now it's pulling back. So these exact double tops and double bottoms, we're going to be looking at that in the TLT. 92.23 was the low. Uh, two, three weeks ago, 91.83 was it? 91.85 was the low in October of last year, the low of the market, actually. And now look at this. We're arching over and we're tipping over. Is it going to hold here or is it going to break down is the question. Double bottom. Let's look at the IWM. IWM has already been pink for a little while now, for two days. No, no, what am I saying? For two days. I mean... Even two weeks ago, when it looked like it was a cross green, it didn't. It deflected lower. Not a good, good action. It's down 52 cents at 181.85. Basil Chapman, Tiger Munitions Hour. Dow's down 117. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. 
for daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities. Subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi folks, so let me just uh, get this organized yeah, so that I can be better. Uh... Yeah, okay. So we're looking at the IWM coming all the way back, retesting, almost retesting the left side low, sitting on the 200-period moving average, and the weekly chart is really basically a rectangle that's gone into an H to an M to an H pattern. So talking about the H to an M pattern, question came in, actually quite a few questions came in, and even to a person I was speaking to, well, uh, some people that I was speaking to, <clears throat> who uh, had one of those really big uh, investment companies around the world, um, just a short while ago, uh, we were talking about different things, and we are talking about the bonds, and this person thinks that the Fed is going to ease up now and that we could be getting into a low in yields. And I said, well, um, so far, uh, every indication has said that there are key levels to watch. So I'll tell you the levels that I was looking at. In the dreaded H pattern, when you take time, if you don't fail at the, at the first or second peak, peak A or peak B like this, went to peak A and then a peak B, and here's your dreaded H pattern. I'll show it to you in a moment what it looks like for those of you new to my work. <coughs> Gosh, got to get that sneeze in, I guess. Um, so when I'm doing a chart formations, basically what I'm looking at is, all right, yeah, I, I'm looking at three kind of core patterns. This is besides the rectangle patterns and all the others, just directional moves. And essentially what we look at is straight line moves. Now, why is that not moving? Uh-oh, am I stuck? Don't tell me. Did I do something wrong? Oh, no, I added an extra chart. Well, let's just see. This works, right? Yes. Oh, okay, I've got the wrong thing on. Let's just put that there. Uh, why did it disappear? Why did it disappear? Uh, let me go back to this. Oh, there it is. Okay, good. Uh, that's what I wanted. I wanted to show you the pattern called straight line up, straight line down. That's a straight line, straight line, straight line, straight line up. So you can have little bumps, but basically it's going from one point to the other very quickly. 
But you also get cup formations. That could be a V or an inverted V or an arch. So you've got one, two, and one, three. You've got straight line down, arch formation called the dreaded H because why? If it takes out the left side low, it usually goes to peak A or a B and then takes out the left side low. It can be a very, very sharp pullback. If it goes to a peak C or a D, three or four higher peaks, it means you've used up a lot of both upside and downside energy. And sometimes you start to stall quite nicely. You might take it out, but you kind of treat the left side low as really a good cushion. Not always, but a lot more often than this dreaded H pattern. So this is the TLT in the daily chart. Let me just expand this for a moment and take you to stretched out version right there. Look how many dreaded H's. There's a large one, there's a small one, small one, small one, small one, small one, small that goes to a large D. And the D says you can hold just underneath the left side low, which it does. But then it makes another arch and a peak B and fails and it goes smash. Peak B and it goes smash. Peak C and it's stalling, stalling, stalling. So there's a chance that 92.23 to 91.84 Five or 83 was it on the left side um, from October of last year that could become quite a good cushion it's a beautiful thing when you look at this left side right side price time match and it went just a little longer to almost the level but now what I'm looking at is what are the ingredients that would tell us that yields are going to go higher now because a lot of people are asking me this question one particularly right now in the den um, Hi, Basil. Please review TLT. Yesterday, a nice engulfing candle. Today, an inside day so far, despite the weakness. If this can rise from here, might we have a successful dreaded H, a.k.a. an H of hope? I like that. That that a bottom is in. You know, a bottom is not the bottom. So, yes, a bottom is exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah, to say there could be a deflection low. So, now, this is because I know what you're talking about. When you say a bottom, you're meaning a bottom in yields. Therefore, there could be a decent rally in, in the uh, market. But then you need the dollar. You do need the dollar at least to show some more serious weakness than just three days of a slight breather. You need the dollar to be down at 100, not 105.01 right now, down eight ticks with having made a new uh, recovery high on the 14th of September. This is a, a daily chart. 14th of September at... 105.44. Let me just type that in. 105.44. You also need to see that the, um, and I would put gold in this category because if the dollar is going to be pulling back, then gold should rally sharply. And it's really struggling. It's unchanged in 1953. And it looks to me like that 200 period moving average is just such strong resistance right now that you break above it, you'd have to see the dollar literally plunge two points, two and a half points, and gold has to get close to 2000, 1992, somewhere in that area, very quickly. You have to see the TBT, which is underneath the previous half, 36.44, uh, with the MACD, look, the MACD is just, it's okay, it's positive, but just okay. But look at that stochastic at 91%. I never fight that flat stochastic you see when it makes a big turn and it comes down you turn and you come down because remember the stochastic is representing the price look at the price of the of the of the whatever you're following look how it follows this look how it follows the macd so well so in this particular instance i'm looking at this and saying it has to be news that just absolutely changes direction and I can't tell you how many times I've waited and waited and waited for the Fed to make the decision to get a huge market turn it now it works out differently it isn't the Fed that makes the big market turn they make uh, intra-week fluctuations serious ones but very seldom once I remember buying the DXD for subscribers that's the two times short the, the Dow after the Fed speak and I put out a, a note at about 2.30 that day, and it worked out well. But most of the time, I could have done the same trade the next day or had no trade at all. So all I'm saying is what you need to see is not a break to the upside to start a strong, not G slash C, but a huge leg C in the daily chart of the TBT. That's two, three, uh, that is the short side of the TLT because they're both getting close to, in this case, resistance, in the other case, support. 
And if you're looking at the weekly chart, I don't see anything yet in this weekly chart. Look, the MACD is strong, very strong. For the MACD to go negative, you're going to have to see us smash to the 3180, 3.18 level. It's a 35.86 right now. And the nine, the price is way over the nine. Yeah, but struggling on the left side to get above that. But everything here is good. Stochastic's okay, actually, at 80%. If it goes down to 77%, then I can see a pullback. So I, I would prefer not to like put all your chips on the table other than to say, yeah, we're at a point now. Just look, USDJPY. This is the currency pair between the yen and the dollar. USDJPY. Look at this. It's starting to stall. It did make that peak D, and it's flattening out. So, and the MACD is still good. Uh, uh, oops, the MAG, MACD has gone negative. The stochastic is still at 92%. So there's still internal strength here. So it has to be a process or an incredible smashing or reversal to the downside in this case with the US. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T-bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, right, so you know, the answer is that yes, I can see a little optimistic kind of turnaround and bounce, but the, the key trend using my nine period moving average, 914s, says that a lot has to happen to change those to go back to positive after all this time. So let me just do a couple of things. I wanted to show you, um, can I do that now? Yes. So in the den, I never hit my CL stop. Is that a CL meaning? 
Colgate Palmolive. Stop at 92. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Well, oh, you know, I used to have these all notated. Anyway, I lost them. I'll, I'll do them again. So look, the, all your defensive stocks are not doing well. Look at this. Colgate Palmolive, uh, PG. You can just go on and on and on. Look at this. Weak. Not, not as weak as some of the others, but yeah, weak. Look at GIS. This is the... Um, <clears throat> The XLP, this is a select. There we go. Look, this is the right way. It was just two, wait, about four months ago, General Mills was trading in the 90s. It's at 66, a 30% decline. Uh, XLP, look, here it is. The, uh, here we go. S&P Select Consumer Staples Spider Fund. Look, making dreaded H's, lowercase lows. I mean, just keeps doing that. The, the big test is coming here in another couple of days. Will it hold the 70? Is it 69 or 70, this low right here? Uh, it's at 70.85. It's trading at 71.12. It's almost there. And that goes back to March in a big arch formation at a peak D. Peak D in the daily, peak D in the weekly, peak E in the monthly. Uh, I. That's why I'm saying this is a little bit more serious uh, in the sense that what you would expect that the S and P Select com consumer staples would do be be doing well, but look at my DBA. This is uh, subscribers. We own the DBA. This is DBA Agricultural Fund. You remember we were talking about these double tops? How about twenty two point thirty eight in peak D in the Chapman Way? Peak D in the Chapman Way means that in, uh, the objective of a buy, buy signal to buy mode is to get you to at least a D in the Chapman Wave, and then other things can happen. Wow, twenty two. 38 down to 21.04, back to where? 22.38 three days ago. It looked perfect. Left, uh, well, it's not perfect because it wasn't the exact low, but to the measurement that I had, beautiful left side, right side price time match with the with the bar symmetry. This is the plumb line, moved it to the right. But look at this. Um, it's holding, and it hasn't made leg F in the weekly chart because it's stalled right there. But this is the agriculture fund. And this is and this is what I mean about a bifurcated market. Look, in the DB agricultural fund, you have wheat. Well, wheat, look at the 200 period moving average resistance right there in the 760s. What is it, 587 right now? Plummets. Look at this, soybean. A dreaded H pattern right here, fails at a peak C. Uh, monthly chart still very good. Weekly chart already starting to fail, but the nine hasn't crossed negative yet. Look at corn. Uh, corn is at a low right now. Um, and yet the DB Agriculture Fund, because it has the mix of sugar, almost at a new R high. Sugar is at 20. Whoa, Sweet Tooth America, 27.61 up 26. Leg D, and I was asked about this the other day. Yeah, so the DBA is working because of this one thing, sugar is so strong, because the others are pretty weak. Um, all right, so I wanted to look at, question came in about Microsoft. Microsoft is about to make a dreaded H pattern. Oops, I didn't put that in correctly there. Uh, let me just get rid of that. Edit. There. Needs a plus sign over the D, right there. Doji candle pulling back. So Microsoft doesn't look horrible, but it really is struggling. Let's put it that way. And look, it made a new all-time high three months ago. Mm, did I say all-time high? Yeah, that is an all-time high in Microsoft. Uh, way all-time high. <laughs> oh wow, is that a my? Uh, well, yep, all-time high. So 349 was the high in November of 2021. And lo and behold, it goes to 368, wasn't it? 366.78 in July. 360x, did I say 78? I can't even remember now. Um, yeah, and there it is at 325. So it's starting to fail. Apple. Oh, type it there. Look at this, Apple. Where is it now? It's down 47 cents at 177.51. There's your dreaded H, perfect, at 198.39 high in July. 
the rallies fails at peak A and it goes A minus because it plummets and gaps down. Then it has a big peak A to B and it fails and it's fading right now. 171.96 was the low in August. And here is at 177.48 with the week nine period moving average below the 14. So the answer to the question is, yeah, I can see bounces, but I don't see the big move as if to say this is the low and now we're going to scream to the upside. Not yet. I think we just we need a little more time and certainly a little more price in some aspects. So this is Apple. I've got all that in. I should take it away. That's from before it split way back there. Uh, 233.47 was the high in October of 2018. Uh, 2018, but that's before the split. So that would have been right here. Uh, was that the high? Was that the low? Uh, it must have been the low. Uh, peak D, right there. This is your peak D right here. So today's price is 58.37. Um, and that was back in 2018. So isn't this interesting? It made a new all-time high three three months ago, Apple, um, and now it's pulling back. 182.94 was the high in January of 2022, and 198.29 in July. And look at this, double topping and pulling back. So that's why I'm saying you've got to be careful here. That's all. So um, now I want you to just show you this. So the SMHs, it's really important. I had a question about, about the SMH. Where do I think it's going to? Well, it's, I can't tell you where it's going to because I haven't yet. I'm real close to a sell signal in the weekly chart, and I'm, it might turn out that the sell signal gets upgraded immediately to a sell mode if it goes by Friday. Any day that it closes under 143, that's going to impact. Look, it's going to impact the weekly chart of the Jamwave Inside Track propellant zone. Because that'll become a repellent zone. MACD's weak, stochastic is very weak at 42%. On balance volume is weak. Nine period moving averages decline, but it hasn't crossed negative. It'll take 136 before 137 before the weekly chart of the SMH turns down. So when we shorted right there, two days after the Doji candle high of 161.17 on the 31st of July. Look how sharply it pulled back to 143. Well, 143 was the low of 142.98, way, way back here in June. So it tested it and had a really strong bounce. Peak A, peak B, peak C. Peak C says, yeah, maybe there's enough support in the one low 140s to actually have a bit of a bounce. You can see that everything is close to having good news give a bounce. But we'll have to see if it does that because the chance of saying, whoo, doesn't look too good today. I'll be back. Dow's down 100, 200. I'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. 
Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insight, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Yeah, so this, look at this 10-minute uh, chart of the Eat Mini. Look at that arching over. Uh, it took out key support, and it's almost at a one-to-one -one to the downside. It's getting ready for just at least another bounce attempt. Ooh, this is ugly action down 30. All right, now let's get back to this. So the questions came in. So um, high-grade copper. High-grade copper. Not acting all that well, making the lowercase h. Actually, it's more like an arch formation right now. Uh, one, two, a question came in about uh, heating oil, HO. Is that pulling back? Well, it did pull back. Now it's having a nice session, a green session. And the nine period moving average is still very strong. I wouldn't fight this. And you can see, look, I, I drew this in yesterday, the heating oil monthly chart. It's got this inside track repellent zone. Wow, if it climbs into the uh, three point. 37, this is a continuous contract. If it starts to climb into the 3.60s, whew, uh, that's going to be a sign to say it's going to tackle that uh, resistance level again. That's so heating oil is, uh, and this is, you know, we're starting to see heating oil become a reality as people start to, the weather's starting to get a little cold here in the Northeast. So a question came in about, um, I did this, oh, uh, what was, oh, Sintas, one of the ones that I've been watching for decades as a key ingredient in telling us about, uh, let's see, is that, yep, that's it. This is an F slash C right here in the daily chart, F slash C. Uh, the weekly chart, this is an F. It's getting a little tight in terms of um, the notation. F is where you've got to be a little bit careful, but that's all because all, it's a doji candle so far. It's a leg E. In the monthly chart, wow, it's, this is an all-time high. So if if Sintas overalls, uniforms, rentals is an all-time high, what's it telling us that the Fed's going to do? I I have to tell you, I I think the Fed's kind of stuck. I don't think they must change any. Or they, I shouldn't say they must. It, they can do whatever they want. Obviously, I'm just saying from the chart pattern that I'm looking at, I don't think I see anything yet that says to them that their charter, the one that they've claimed that they're following, should change. Uh, because, look, even the home builders, so this is Sintas. Wait a minute, let's go to builders, B-L-D-R, builder. This is builders first source, ink, building materials, um, manufactures, everything for the, uh, not everything, but a chunk for the housing and for the building area. Peak C, doji candle last month. Uh, quite a steep pullback from the 156.84 level down to 129s. This is saying, yep, there is a bit of a, a, a bit of a problem here. Home Depot, same sort of thing. Look at that plunge in Home Depot and Toll Brothers. But Toll Brothers, if you're looking at the uh, the um, look, yes, Toll Brothers turned around today, so now it's down dollar ten. But that monthly chart is still a really strong leg E. Looks like it almost looks like the uh, Sintas chart made an all time high. Nope, it wasn't an all time high. The Sintas uh, Toll Brothers back in. No, it is an all time high. Gosh, look at that. All time high in 2005, uh, June was 
53.73. And here it is, 20% high at 76. Ha, huh, interesting, huh? Not all of them have done that. So the HGX index, that's the HGX housing, Philadelphia housing index, uh, is down today, but only a little bit. And the monthly chart has made this dread, dreaded H pattern. Now, I have an alternate count that I'm, I'm keeping active here. That's an E, that's an F slash A, a G slash B, goes to a C. Uh, wait, 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 oh, 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 from here. So this is the one that says A, B, C, D. So there's a, a way of counting this because in the Chapman methodology, it shouldn't fail ser seriously at a peak C. So I said, I must have missed something. So this is the alternate count that says everything about it at this particular point says there's a good chance that's a peak D. So we're watching this because the moment, any time the next three weeks, if the HGX Philadelphia housing sector index, which has a Chapman wave overlapping wave at peak C, should go to a D at some point. But if it starts to break down and go to the, it's at 529. If it starts to go to 505, between 505 and 495, uh, that's where you'll start to see the green nine pre moving average turn pick. Hasn't yet. So our next question came in. So um, Disney. In YouTube, the question is, uh, thoughts on Disney leaps. So leaps are like options. I, I'm not sure you can even call them expiring options. I think they just go there. They are a um, very small price of uh, whatever the instrument is that you're looking at. So I would avoid looking at leaps right now. But remind me, in about two weeks' time, as we get to the end of September, beginning of October, that's when I think you can look at leaps. If you're if you like with Disney, I would I'd wait. I'd, I'd say six to seven points does make a difference in leaps if you're going out only into January or February of next year. If you're going out even longer than that, then I, you know a couple of points doesn't make a difference. But I I would wait because I don't think Disney's quite finished this down move. Remember we were looking at the uh, the what did I say it was with a rising highs uh, in the monthly chart. Well, this is exactly the same thing, but it's upside down. There's a lower lows. Uh, what was it? It wasn't Syntest. It was, what did, I get? what did I look at just a little while ago? Oh, my. Uh, wasn't Syntest. Well, it doesn't matter. Whatever it was going up like that. Um, now we're looking at the same pattern, but on the downside. So I'd, I'd wait for it to get into this inside track in the monthly chart. So that's Disney. Next question was, uh, Basil, the GDX left behind a gap uh, from 11.422. I'm of opinion GDX is building cause to close that gap. Do you have any thoughts of support to support this idea? Who now let's see where the gap is. GDX. Uh, wait, there was another question there. Let me just get to that. Yeah, I'll do that in a moment. So the GDX, are oh, you talking about this gap here? Is this a gap down or a gap up? Oh, 11.4, 11.4, 2022, I didn't even see it. Oh, 2022, 2022. Let's just open this out and we'll go there. All uh, right, okay. So here we go, 2022, here we go. Right there, oh, you're talking about that gap right there, but that wasn't, was it the fourth? Yeah, that's it. So you're talking about this gap right here. You know, I can't do things like that. Remind me when it, it's a, that was a, it, that was around about 22, and it's trading at 29.50 right now. There are so many other levels of support I'd have to look at first. Once those goes, absolutely. But first of all, let's just look at this. It's gone green. The line period moving average. Uh, the GDX gold mine is down 27 cents at 39.48. It's really holding very well at this particular point. I would just say this low right here, the doji candle of the 7th of September of 2023, not 2022, at 28.16, that's your first. You take that out, and then all of a sudden you're looking at a lowercase h that looks like a lowercase m. I've already drawn it in. Then you're going to say, okay, now it can pull back sharp. So, no, right now I'm just saying GDX is holding pretty darn well. Um, silver. 
Mercedes is also holding pretty well, but it, it doesn't look good under the 200 period moving average. So go one step at a time, Dow Jones 236, I'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. NN.com. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. I'm looking at some questions. Um, okay, as you speak about TLT monthly liquid correlation of the H band as well. Okay, yeah. So we just got to watch those support levels. So Amazon right now. Um, so Amazon this is a very interesting in the in the last segment we've got here. Amazon made a peak D. There are we were waiting for that peak D. It made that peak D and now it's starting to pull back, but it hasn't got it down. I have to wait for the day to see if this is a sell signal. Everything so far says I should call it a sell signal, but I'll put a plus sign just because I have to wait. It's a daily chart, wait for the end of the day. And the weekly chart, you made your peak E. Now it's like a drop drop bucket pattern that uh, A2 was talking about. Drop bucket pattern is where you make the cup formation and then it fails. It basically it's like a backhoe that has this big bucket, grabs all the soil, puts it in, and drops it. There's a drop bucket. All right. So we're watching that for the TLT. Uh, IWM doesn't look very good at all. A LAC, it was a question. LAC, LAC. LAC is lithium, something or other. What is it? Lithium. Oh, uh, so Amazon. So right here, this is a peak D, another D in the Chapman Wave methodology. Right there, peak D, pulling back from the 200 period moving average down a dollar seven. I, I wanted to just finish up that Amazon, 
Um, weekly chart still looks fantastic. So the B, uh, RTH, which is the retail index, which does have Amazon 20%, made a peak F. Yes, your peak A, peak B, peak C, and now it's turning down. Peak E in the daily, in the weekly, you be careful. XRT is the one that doesn't, Amazon is equal weighted. This looks way worse. This is retail. Look, there's your dreaded H in the monthly chart. I have to tell you, just got to be really careful here. Don't be good. We, we had a little screamer today that we short would, thought would work. We bought it way below yesterday's high, and yet it still pulled back really quickly. Thank goodness we had a tight stop. We're down, we're out. And I think you've got to be very careful. Even our UEC, if you've taken tons of money off, nice, nice gains, starting to pull back, but nothing technically in this particular in this uranium.